Okay, I guess it's time. Afternoon. Thank you all for coming. It's the last session of the day. Uh, you can get to beers after this. Uh, so I won't, run, uh, I won't run over. So today we're here to talk about uh, all the metrics that you can pull out of your Kubernetes clusters. Uh, there is a wealth of metrics to, uh, to look at, and how do you know which ones are the right ones um, is a great question. So we'll take a look at a little bit, a little bit about that today. Um, I'll be here after the talk to answer any questions that you have about metrics and Kubernetes. I love talking about metrics and all the things. Um, and I really like talking about brewing beer. So if you are into beer, I like to brew beer. So do I. So that's, uh, that's, that's super fun. So, so here's, uh, here's what we're going to go over today. There are uh, many, many met metrics that come out of a Kubernetes system and trying to figure out which, one of those, which ones of those metrics are important. Uh, is particularly difficult when you're getting started. So we're going to look at a couple of methods that uh, allow you to sort of winnow down the number of metrics to look at initially. Uh, I'm sure some of you have seen these before, full, four golden signals, the use method, the red method, and we'll apply those methods to some of the metrics that we can pull from Kubernetes just to give us a place to start. By no means comprehensive, uh, but it is a great place to begin. Then we'll look at individually all of, the, uh, all of the metric sources that we can get from Kubernetes itself. Some of those come out of the box, uh, installed in the kubelet, installed in the API server. Others are things that you want to uh, install inside of your cluster in order to be able to gather those metrics. And all of this is going to be taking place in the context. I'm assuming you're going to gather metrics using Prometheus or some other Prometheus-capable scraping target thing that will pull those metrics in. And then at the end, we'll look at uh, some interesting things that you can do with recording rules in, uh, in Prometheus and do some metric aggregation up through your cluster. So what are the important metrics in your cluster? We have a modest production cluster that we run at FreshTracks, and there are 273,000, more than 273,000 unique series that come off of this cluster. It's an amazing amount of uh, metrics that come out. Uh, the, amazing, the, the level of visibility that you get from running Kubernetes is, is fantastic. But when you install Prometheus and you install Grafana and you open up Grafana for the first time, what are you, what are you greeted with? Nothing. Blank, dashboards, nothing. And then you have to start assembling all the things together to be able to bring that together to say, what are the important things that we're going to do? So some methods to figure out how it is that we're going to look at these, these metrics. Uh, there are a number of uh, methods out there. If you've read the Google SRE book, the four golden signals talk about if you're only going to look at four metrics in your cluster, what are the four metrics you could look at? And these are the four met metrics. Latency, errors, traffic, saturation. So when I first sat down and I read that, I'm like, perfect, that's exactly what I need. I can now take these and go apply them to my, all of my things. But what does saturation of a Kafka cluster mean? They're, they're, these, these metrics aren't universally applicable for all things inside of your cluster. Because really, inside of a Kubernetes cluster, you've got two bits that you're, working, that you're thinking about. You have resources that are provided by the hardware, and you have applications or services. And those two things are fundamentally different. And there's an overlap for these four, uh, for these four metrics that, um, that we want to look at. So some smart people spent a lot of time thinking about this. Brendan Gregg came up with the use method. Utilization, saturation, and errors. These three, a subset of the four golden from, from Google, allow you to reason about the resources that you have running on your machines. So where a resource is defined as all physical functional components. So in the scope of Kubernetes, we have four basic resources that we're primarily uh, concerned with. We have CPU, we have memory, we have disk, and disk comes in two flavors, both I.O. and thr or throughput and capacity, and we have network. Saturation talks about how full is this thing. Some of these things can be described as saturation. So I can say my CPU is saturated in such a way that I've got extra work to do that can't be accomplished, therefore I'm going to queue this stuff and do it later. That's the definition Brendan gives to saturation. And unfortunately, some of the error bits that we want to get out from our hardware are just not available to us at the end user, especially in a Kubernetes environment. So that's great for covering your, your hardware resources. And it applies also equally to, your, uh, to the containers themselves. And we'll look deep at that. 
So the next thing is the RED method. So Tom Willeke from, uh, from Causal, uh, now Causal, now Grafana Labs, uh, coined this, and he, it's a spin on the use method. And everybody's like, why do we need another method? And he's like, well, it's because there, there's the, other, the three other metrics of the four golden signals. So we have rate, errors, and duration. So we apply these things to your services. So this is the software that runs on your cluster. So it's, I, I don't need to talk about how saturated is my service because my service doesn't get saturated, my hardware gets saturated. But I do want to know what the incoming request rate for my service is and the duration that it's going to take that service to, request, to respond to that rate. Kubernetes has both of these. And we're going to look at some of the metrics. I can't cover them all. I had to slash a bunch of slides out of this deck in order to get it into 35 minutes. But Kubernetes has both, and we'll look at and we'll apply these methods to some of them. So let's talk a bit about the source of metrics and where we get them, and then we'll apply these individually. So when running a Kubernetes cluster in the context of collecting metrics with Prometheus, uh, the Prometheus pattern for getting metrics out of something that doesn't expose in the, in the native Prometheus metrics exposition format is to run an exporter. And the, the most common exporter that you're going to run in your Kubernetes cluster is the node exporter. You run this as a daemon set, it runs on every node in your cluster, and it basically scrapes everything out of proc and reformats it as, uh, as a Prometheus metric endpoint. So now Prometheus can come up and scrape all of that information out of every node in your cluster, and now you have more information than you could ever hope to want to know about, inside of, about your nodes inside of Prometheus. Running in GCP, a thousand unique series comes off of a typical node. There's a ton of information in here. Again, we're going to use the use method in this case in order to break this down and try to figure out what are the ones that we want to look at. So if we look at, we're going to apply use, U-S-E, to the CPU resource on your node. So the series that comes out from the node exporter is called node CPU. And it is break, broken down by 15 different dimensions about CPU usage on your system. Uh, all but about three or four of those actually correspond with actual use of the CPU. The rest are idle time, which is the rest of the stuff that's not being used. IO wait, the time that's spent waiting on disk. And, I'm not, and guest time. I'm not exactly sure what guest time is. That might be when a, in a virtualized environment. Somebody else is using this. So you can run this query, and you'll actually get a, uh, a count. So this will sum up to, because uh, node CPU is a counter, so it's incrementing for every CPU second that's being, uh, that's being uh, used. Um, pardon the pun. Uh, and so you'll get basically a count of, of cores that are being used across your cluster by instance. And instance, is, in this case, is the node. So now we want to know how saturated my, my CPU is. And so the, probably the easiest way to talk about CPU saturation is to look at the, the load average on a system. So the load average is loosely defined as uh, the number of jobs that are in the run queue that are running or are queued to get onto the CPU by the scheduler. Again, Brendan Gregg has an excellent treatise on uh, the history of the load average in the Linux kernel, I encourage you to go dig that up and read it. It's fascinating reading to, you know, if, you're, if you're digging into this stuff. But the load average, because it's already being averaged by the system that it's coming from by itself is not enough because uh, one node may have 10 CPUs in it and another may have 20. And the load average is relative to the number of CPUs that are on the machine. So we want to normalize the load average against the number of cores that are actually on that box. So this query here, the denominator is counting, is using uh, the node CPU. So we just pick one of the metrics out of node CPU, and we're going to count, and that's going to give me a CPU count. So I'm going to normalize the load by, um, by the number of CPUs, times it by 100, and not, now I have a, a representative percentile uh, saturation for my CPU. And if you're having errors on your CPU, chances are you're not actually get, getting any metrics at all because you're probably kernel panicked and you're down. So, so none of that is actually um, exposed. So we'll apply these same things for memory. Again, so the node exporter gives us uh, Memory available and memory total. Memory available is actually a relatively new uh, metric that came up in the Linux kernel about 3.18, 3.18. Uh, 
you've ever run free, you know, at the command line trying to figure out how much free memory you have on a Linux box, it's always like, well, that kind of depends. Because uh, you've got, you know, you've got, uh, you've got file system cache using stuff up, you've got buffers over here, you've got all these, like, how much free memory do I have? And they added a, a thing in the kernel that actually says, this is the amount of free memory that you can get if you were to try to exhaust memory. So that's fantastic. So if you divide those two things, then you can get a percentage of memory used. But that's not the complete picture when running in a Kubernetes environment because Kubernetes actually reserves amount of, a certain amount of the system CPU in order to run the system itself. It doesn't give it all to the kubelet. And so there's another project that we'll talk in depth about later. later. It's a cube, the kube node, uh, sorry, it's the kube status plugin. Sorry, that's wrong. Anyway, so it actually tells how much memory is available to Kubernetes in order to run. So kube status capacity, kube status allocatable. So that gives you the amount of memory that's actually available for Kubernetes to take advantage of. Saturation in memory, uh, in a memory term on a machine is kind of weird because the definition of saturation by Brendan Gregg says, I've got work to do that needs to be queued somehow, needs work that needs to be done later, but what is memory allocation that needs to happen that couldn't happen now? In the context of, uh, of a Linux system, I have virtual memory. Sure, I have unlimited amount of virtual memory, but from an operational standpoint, you'd never want to go into swap. So the, the notion of saturation is, is really sort of nebulous because you don't want to go into swap. And in a Kubernetes context, if you start exceeding the, the limits on your containers, you'll actually get killed, um killed, gone. So saturation, so you could look at utilization as the amount of memory in use, and maybe saturation as the amount of memory free. So you just flip the, flip the numerator denominator, and then we'll, we're going to call that saturation. It's kind of an odd thing to look at from, from a node perspective. When we get to the containers, some, we get some more data that tells us something of interest. And then if you're running, if you have uh, correctable memory in your system, some systems will expose uh, uh, the correction counts that are happening on your, no, on your, uh, your memory modules. Uh, GCP doesn't give this to us. I, I was not able to get any of that out, but the node exporter will give it if it has it. So that's all the metrics. Well, that's the application of the use method as applied to a few, a handful of the metrics in, uh, on, your node, uh, on your node exporter metrics. We get a wealth of information about the container runtime itself. C Advisor is a project from Google that, as a standalone project, uh, it introspects the container runtime, typically Docker or Rocket, whatever it is that you have running on your system, and then exposes in a Prometheus metrics endpoint format all of the runtime container level metrics about every container that's on your system. The kubelet that runs inside of all of the nodes on your cluster vendors that project in and just runs it internally and exposes all the metrics natively through the kubelet. So this is something that you get out of the box for free, sits on a slash metrics endpoint, Prometheus will scrape it out of the box. The configuration is already there. So we get some interesting metrics about how our containers are running. So I get CPU usage, both user and system time of the CPU usage of the container, everything that's running in that container, and the amount of time that's throttled. So if you're running with uh, CPU limits on your containers, uh, your containers can't run past that, and they will be throttled, and that gets reported. I get file system reads and writes, I.O. that's going in and out of the file system, comes out of, the, out of C Advisor. Memory usage for each of those containers and all of the network bits. So if we take a couple of these metrics, again, we're going to look at CPU and memory, USE applied to those things in the context of the containers. So per container, I get CPU usage seconds total. Again, a counter incremented for every CPU second that is used by the container. I take a rate of this over some period of time, and now I can get a per core usage of a container wherever my container is running on my cluster. So this will give me a saturation or utilization of my CPU by any individual container. How many people are running with uh, constraints, re re resource requests and constraints? It's, it's a best practice to do, because if you don't run with them, you're basically giving each and every container on the system unlimited access to all of the resources on the box. And then you come along and say, why, why is my machine behaving poorly? Because I've got a runaway container that's, that's consuming all the CPU or is consuming all the memory. 
it's a best, a best practice, just at least from a security perspective, to do that so you know you're not denial of servicing yourself, your own cluster, if you don't have these limits set. By setting limits on CPU, this interacts with the completely fair scheduler and containers on the, on the machine, and the container will only be allowed to run the number of CPU seconds that you've allocated for that time in any given time period. The rest of it gets recorded as the amount of time for that period of time that the container was trying to run but couldn't and was throttled. So you get a measure of how throttled your system is when you're running in limits. So if you set your limits too low, now you need to be able to say, well, did I deploy a bug that something's changed or I need to increase the limits on my container? Again, these are both counters that come out. And again, no, no errors at the CPU level, at the container level. Applying USC to memory for your containers. So I get container memory usage bytes. Seems like the first thing you'd want to reach for when you're trying to figure out how much memory utilization you have. But that, me that metric includes all of your file system page cache that your process might be using. So that's not, it's an incomplete picture because that memory could be freed. Uh, if you close the file system, the operating system can take it back if it needs to. So container memory working bytes is actually the, the, a more realistic uh, approximation of the memory that your container is using. And I believe it's the metric that is used, that the OOM killer uses to decide whether or not to kill your container should you exceed the memory limit that you've applied, because you've all, you've all applied memory limits. Saturation, again, we talked earlier with node memory saturation where, okay, well, I don't really have a saturation metric for my node because I don't want to use more memory than I have. But if you've applied limits to your containers, now I can start to see what percentage of that limit have I, uh, have I gone into as part of my container. So my container is using five megs out of a 10, 10 meg limit, and I can tell how close I am to that limit or not. We had to do a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of juggling here with the labels because the labels that are coming out from C-Advisor and the labels that are coming out from uh, CubeState Metrics are slightly different, so I had to align those labels in order to get this, but that's the query that will actually give you back uh, how much memory, as a ratio, how much memory you're using against your limit. Errors in the context of USE for containers, uh, so container memory fail count, uh, it's unclear, I have not seen this uh, in the wild yet, I haven't tested it uh, thoroughly, but the number of times that you went to go allocate memory and couldn't, so you hit the resource limit, chances are you got, you got um killed. So container memory failures total is interesting because if you look at the, the labels that are on that secondary, that other, um, that other metric, there are major faults and page faults. So page faults, a page fault is where uh, a page of, of something has to come in off of disk into memory. And if you're doing a lot of I.O. in the file system and reading a bunch of files, uh, page faults are normal. So that's just normal paging activity that comes in and out. Major faults, on the other hand, are uh, memory pages that have to go to disk. So I don't have enough room in order to be able to fit this into memory. So major faults are something that you want to pay attention to. So quick sampling of a couple of uh, container level metrics that come out of C-Advisor and applying the use metrics to it queries in order to show those things. Those are some of the most important ones. So now let's talk a little bit about some of the services that are available inside of Kubernetes that we wanna, we wanna look at. So we're gonna switch over now to talking about uh, the red method as applied to the Kubernetes API server itself. Again, Prometheus metrics exposition format Export, exported on a slash metrics endpoint available for Prometheus in order to scrape that data. I get performance of all of the controllers that are inside of my Kubernetes API and all of the work queues that are associated with those controllers. When you kube control apply a file, you basically lob the file into the, into the controller and it queues up the work that has to be done. On very large systems, there's a backlog of stuff that needs to be worked in order for the controller to get the work done that it wants. And if those queues are backing up, you may want to know that and do something about it because something's not working well. I get request rates and latencies about the API server, the gRPC or HTTP calls that are coming into the, C, into the, the metric server itself. I've got a helper cache that runs inside of, inside of uh, the API server that caches data from, the, from etcd, and I can get uh, hit and miss ratios on uh, the, that particular cache. 
And then out of the box, because I'm using, this is Go, and the Golang Prometheus client uh, exposes the general process information about this process, so file descriptors, memory, amount of CPU that's being used, and I also get all of the Golang instrumentation, so all of that comes out of the box. So we're going to try to apply the red method to some of these metrics. The API server request count is just what it says it is. It's a counter, it goes up, um, and it has a bunch of dimensions on that particular, uh, that particular metric, one of which is by HTTP verb. So I can uh, blow this out and get uh, how many posts, how many deletes, how many gets, how many watches that are going on uh, per endpoint. If I want to watch errors that are happening on my, um, on my API server, I can take a ratio of the failing API server requests against the number of total requests that are, that are running. So this gives me a ratio of how many things are failing over time, and I can put an alert on that. And then I get a latency bucket that comes out as well. So I can draw a distribution using, using the histogram quantiles uh, for, um, from Prometheus to say, what is the 90th percentile of that particular thing? Well, I was playing around and putting these things together. I stumbled across um, a query that I thought was, that was interesting. One of, the, uh, one of the dimensions on API server request count is client, um, which is basically the, uh, the client string of all of the, uh, of the requesting entity to the API server. And I thought it was fascinating just looking at all of the different uh, the client strings that were coming into to my cluster. You know, it's like, oh, I've got two different versions of Prometheus running in my cluster. Um, that's interesting, didn't know that. Um, I know why now that I think about it, but um, I think that was, that was just a serendipitous find that I found messing around in there, so. Okay, so I've talked, so that's uh, red method as applied to the Kubernetes API server, a couple of those metrics. Um, Cube state metrics, uh, this is uh, another project that you can download, doesn't come out of the box with Kubernetes, but uh, pretty much if you want to monitor interesting things in your Kubernetes cluster, this is one you're going to want to run. There's only one instance of it running in your cluster, it's not a daemon set, you only need one, it doesn't need to be high availability. It talks to the Kubernetes API server and subscribes to a bunch of channels, a bunch of events that's going on, and keeps interesting statistics about all the things that are going on inside of your Kubernetes cluster. You get counts of all of the things. How many containers, how many pods, how many namespaces do I have? You get um, your resource limits because you're setting requests and limits, right? So then you can actually pull that out. We saw those in earlier, uh, earlier examples so that I can use those to actually derive the use metrics that I need. You get container states. So I want to know how many containers that are in a, in, a re, in a restart loop, how many containers are ready, how many are terminating. So I can actually show the container states over time to know whether or not I've got containers uh, that are misbehaving when they shouldn't be. A great thing to alert on. And then another really interesting thing that comes out of cube state metrics are these, the, these so-called labels series. So there's the, a container underbar label series. And that particular series uh, has a constant value of one and then a set of label value pairs that correspond to all the labels that are on the container or the namespace or the whatever it is for all of the node, for all of the nouns that are in there. You're like, well, why would I need a time series series whose value is one all the time? What do I do with that? So you can do interesting things with it if you've got uh, a similar label on another series that's coming out of your application and you want to be able to join those two series together in order to decorate that series with more metadata based on the labels that are on that particular noun. So I've got a container level metric and I have a container set of series, I can join those two series together at runtime and then pick off other labels that are on that series and be able to annotate that, write that back in to Prometheus via recording rule. So a super powerful technique for being able to merge these set, this set of metadata that's coming out. So etcd, uh, if you're running in, so we're running in uh, Google Cloud, so I don't think we have access to the etcds and the masters, but if you're running your own etcd server, there are some very important metrics within etcd that you want to be able to pay attention to and most likely alert on. So etcd is a service, uh, and it actually has a couple of different th ways you want to look at the red method. Uh, 
Um, so leader existence, do I have a leader in my, in my um, etcd cluster? If you don't, you're having a bad day, uh, and that needs to be fixed. If your, leader, if your leader election is changing frequently, then you've probably got some sort of network partition that's going on, or you've got a machine that's flapping. So the rate at which your leader election is reoccurring is, is the sign of a problem, something within your etcd cluster. Proposals are the things that are coming into etcd as far as the writing of state change to etcd, and there are rates on the committed, the applied, the pending, and failed proposals. And because etcd is a, is a quorum-based system and uh, nothing gets committed to, to the database until all of the servers in the cluster have written that uh, information to disk, um, your disk write performance is super important about etcd performance. So you've got slow I.O. on your disk, you're going to have slow I.O. Slow I. on your etcd, and you're going to have slow I.O. on your Kubernetes controllers trying to get work done because they just can't get stuff pushed through. So then if we look at, if we try to apply the red method, well, we've got, so rate errors and duration. Um, etcd actually has two different types of rate error duration that you want to look at. One is the inbound, so all of the inbound traffic that's coming in. So these are the metric names that are, the series names that are going to give you the ability to drive your red methods for inbound traffic. But we also have inter... Uh, node communication that goes on, so all the RPC traffic that's going on in between each of the nodes. And again, I've got rate error and duration information that I want to that I want to derive from those as well. So it's not so red is not just a single RED for a single service. There may be different facets of that service that you want to look at based on how these things are are rolling up. So. That's a tour of all of the places that I know of where we can get metrics out of uh, the, Kubernetes, uh, the Kubernetes system. There may be others, but those are definitely the ones that you're going to want to start with. Um, install Prometheus and start exploring this information. An interesting thing that you can do, though, in the context of uh, container-level metrics as we were looking as they came out of C Advisor. Um, so I've got container-level metrics at every container in my system. And Kubernetes naturally forms a hierarchy based on the container to the pod, to the deployment, to the namespace. So using recording rules inside of Prometheus, I can author things that take all of those container-level metrics and aggregate them up at the pod level, and then aggregate them up at the deployment level, and then aggregate them up at the namespace, and then finally at the cluster level, so that I can have on a single series a single metric that represents all CPU seconds for my entire cluster, or my entire namespace, or my entire deployment, depending on where it is that I want to look at that. So that's kind of interesting. So then you get to, you get to do some, some interesting uh, aggregations and visualizations. So for example, this is a view of all of the deployments, or all of the workloads, as we call them, for, the, for our production cluster. And I've got a aggregate CPU saturation metric that's showing we are using 25 cores on average uh, over, over the amount of time for all of these things. And then uh, the CPU saturation metric that we decided to come up here with was you can't just sum those things to the bottom. So it's sort of a weighted average based on the amount of CPU time and the amount of things that are being throttled overall. Then I can do interesting visualizations where I've got um, so the query or workload. Uh, so here are the, so we're using about three quarters of a core overall on the querier, and we've got some saturation going on. So I can drill into this node and actually get all of the, um, show all of the pods that are running inside of that deployment. And then I've got aggregate metrics that are coming out to that pod, and I can drill into the individual container and then show, okay, these are the two. Uh, so I've got the querier pod, and I've got Jaeger agent that are running on that as well. So Jaeger agent doesn't have any, um, no limits set on this guy, and there are limits set on this guy, and I've got about a 10% saturation rate going on at the container level itself. So that's just an example of some interesting things that you can do uh, with recording rules and the metrics that you're getting out of, um, out of Kubernetes. I have about 50 more slides that I could go into. <laughs> um, 35 minutes is not enough time to really talk about all the things I wanted to talk about, but I'll leave five minutes at the end for some questions. All right, thank you all for coming. Have a great night. Yeah, question. <laughs> oh, wait, a moment. <laughs>
So the question is, when is it okay or not to use the recording rules? So typically recording rules are used um, in place of expensive, expensive queries that you would put on a dashboard. So if you're gonna run a very complex query that's gonna take a lot of time in order to evaluate, and, and you were to place that on the dashboard, then you, you would be executing that query over and over and over again. So you may consider taking that rule, putting it in a recording rule, that way it's evaluated by the system internally and then written down, and then your query just says, give me the values that are as, as a result of that. So the other, the other thing that we use it for is that we have long over time metrics that we want to be able to do. So an aggregation, for example, an aggregation at every level here, I don't want to have to go back in time to roll up to the cluster level all of the containers that are in my cluster. So an example of, a, of, a, um, of an, expensive, an otherwise expensive query. And then I think if it hasn't come out already, um, Prometheus has the ability to change the the, or the frequency of a recording rule by recording rule block. Um, and I believe there's also a feature coming that will allow you to uh, change the, um, how long a particular metric is stored. So, the, so the, the retention policy can be down to the series level. So then you can do interesting things like um, uh, roll up summaries. So I can downsample my, my metric because Prometheus out of the box gives you metrics that are at full, full resolution of the scrape. Now I can downsample that, that metric over a minute, over an hour, over a day, over a year, and then leave those series in my database for a longer period of time. So that would be another example as to why. Thank you. Sure. What other questions? Uh, I don't know, let's take a look. So the question is, uh, you can monitor restarts on, uh, for cube state metrics. So let's see, let's see if we can just find that guy in real time. Status ready, status running. Restarts, sorry, I'm not seeing it. <laughs> there we go. And then if we get a console on that guy. And the labels that are coming out of here. So I get an app. I get a container. So yes, so you can, you can narrow that to the container. What other questions? In the back. Uh, yeah, so the, this is Grafana. The, the thing at the top the, is a custom plugin that we've written. Can we find the, the source code? <laughs> uh, not just yet. We're still, we're still uh, developing our open source strategy, but. We are, con we, are, we are contributing back to the things that we're using, so yes. What other questions? Oh, so I, um, the slides that I published, uh, where can we find the remaining slides? So all the remaining slides are in the deck that I published on the talk. So everything that, that I didn't talk about, I left all the slides in there. Um, so that can, there's some information in there about what is the... Um, what is the new metric server that was released in Kubernetes 1.9? So there's some information there. I've got a blog post on our blog that talks about that as well. Oh, and so there's a link in the back that, so I've got a blog series that's actually going much, much deeper into all of these metrics um, from, from a node level metric, a container level metric. So each of these things I touched on today will be part of that series. And I go way, way deep into that. Um, and then another series that, or another blog post that's on deck is talking about how your, uh, your requests and limits um, interact with the Linux system. So what is the interaction between a CPU limit and the, and the completely fair scheduler, which is a, which is a fascinating topic. <laughs>
So custom application metrics. So that is really up to the application developer. So the, the, application, the metrics that were coming out of uh, the API server and etcd are an example of application level metrics in the context of Kubernetes. Your application metrics are in the context of your application, and I wouldn't know anything about that. Um, for the product that we're putting together, we're trying to figure out easy ways that you can build auto-build dashboards based on just here's a list of the metrics that I'm interested in, and we'll give you an aggregate metric from all of the containers up to the, to the service so that I can see how my service is behaving as a whole, because that's really what you're interested in. I'm not interested about the individual metric down below. I'm sorry. Is the endpoint server uh, reachable by default? I believe it is. Um, you may have to, I think it's just on by default for, for scraping from Kubernetes. Alrighty, enjoy the, uh, enjoy the festivities this evening and thank you all for coming.